In this video, I'll show how I transform this deck by installing stainless steel cables and LED lighting. Although I'm sharing what I did to this deck, it's your responsibility to ensure changes are safe and meet your local building codes. Luckily, the decking, posts, and balusters used on this deck are made of Ipe, a beautiful, dense, tropical hardwood. Unfortunately, this heavy wood and poorly supported rails have caused the sections to sag over time. Using the existing wood, my plan is to make a stronger handrail by laminating the upper and lower rails around balusters that will be spliced together. The original balusters will be replaced with stainless steel cables to achieve a more modern appearance. I'll also install LED lights in the post to provide accent lighting. To help restore the finish and natural beauty of this wood, all of the rails and balusters are sanded and cleaned after disassembly. To splice the balusters together, I'll be cutting acute 15 degree angles to increase the surface area for gluing. This operation is done using my radial arm saw with an auxiliary fence. I'm using my miter gauge to set the 15 degree angle. Since Ipe is very hard, you'll need good carbide tools to cut it. Here I'm using a new Freud LU83 blade, which is an excellent choice for the radial arm saw. This auxiliary fence makes it easy to cut acute angles. The new rails will be glued together with a waterproof marine grade epoxy. During glue up, it's important to use a flat surface so the rails remain as straight as possible. Stainless steel screws are also added for additional strength. The excess wood is trimmed flush with the rails. The laminated rails act as an I-beam and will easily support the handrail without sagging. The new rails will be attached to the post with stainless steel L-brackets. To conceal the brackets, grooves are cut with a dado blade.
the new rails fit between the post and are screwed to the mounted L brackets. I'll be using a simple, economical cable railing system made with 1 8 inch diameter 1 by 19 stainless steel cable and matching sets of right and left hand threaded lag studs. You'll also need a hydraulic crimper with hardened dies suitable for stainless steel or they will deform. A guide is made so that holes in the posts can be precisely and consistently drilled. A little soap on the threads will make it easier to screw in the lag studs. Matching sets of right and left hand threaded lag studs are screwed the same distance into the post so that about half of the threads are remaining. The cable is now run through the intermediate post and then swaged to one lag stud using the hydraulic crimper. The cable is marked and cut to length. The other end of the cable is now hand tensioned and swaged to the other stud with the crimper. To tension the cables, the lag studs are tightened the same amount on both ends. The right and left hand threaded studs are important to prevent twists when the cable is tensioned. There is no need to over tighten the cables, just enough to make them taut. This is a good opportunity to restore the deck planking too. The boards were first scrubbed with a mixture of trisodium phosphate and bleach. A power washer both cleans and helps remove the sun bleached gray color. After drying, the boards are treated with penafin, a penetrating oil with ultraviolet protection for hardwoods like this Epe. After 30 minutes, the excess oil is wiped off with a rag, leaving a nice finish. Before the handrail is attached, this is a great opportunity to add accent lighting, and these low voltage, eyebrow style lights are perfect for the job. Holes are drilled into the top of each post with a large Forstner bit. A chase is cut in the rail with a router to house low voltage landscape wiring. The lamp is mounted and holes are drilled to fish the wire.
It's easy to mount these lights flush to the side post. However, it's a little more challenging to mount lights to corner post. To do that, we're going to need to make corner mounts. I start by gluing three spare balusters together with epoxy and then ripping them to fit the lights. After some sanding, I cut 45 degree bevels on each end. Using a stop block to set the width, I cut wedges off the ends. These wedges will be attached to the corner post as mounting blocks for the lights. The blocks are glued and screwed in place and provide the surface needed to mount lights to the corner post. All of the wire connections were soldered together and then covered with heat shrink tubing. The connections are carefully fitted into the post cavities and covered with tape. To power the lights, I'm using an exterior remote lighting control plugged into an outlet below the deck. The cord connects to an exterior 12 volt transformer mounted below the deck. From there, the low voltage wire runs up the exterior of the post and enters into the rail. The deck lights are controlled using an app on the phone. The top handrails were sanded smooth and then attached from below with countersunk stainless steel screws. A Bondo exterior wood filler was used to fill pocket holes that were present in the rails. Finally, the handrails were oiled with penifin to achieve a beautiful finish. This is the completed project and the cable railing really opens up the view. The new lights also provide a nice ambiance for evening activities. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.